Okie dokie. Got everything you need? Yeah, sorted. Good, good, good. Hello and welcome to episode 27 of I'm Fine, a chat between myself, Damo and Mark. Just Mark. That'll do. Plain old Mark. <laughs> uh, this is the chat around the subjects of health, wealth, well-being, fitness, sport, conspiracy and fan mail from my dear old mum. We're all work in progress and this podcast is no exception. In short, it's a poke at our perfectly imperfect lives. And if we can make just one person feel like they're not alone in all this madness, <laughs> then our work here is done. Uh, coming up, we've got some um, bookmarks and apologies and warm-up and stretch, work-life ballet. We're all being played. We're all getting we mugged off again. It's Danny Dyer, isn't it? <laughs> the wall. Have you... <laughs> yeah, brilliant program. It's got no L's in it. <laughs> the wall. Fun fact. Uh-huh. I sometimes amaze myself that whatever subject, because we don't script any of this. Well, how much you know about everything? Everything. I'm the oracle. I'm the Nostradamus for the okay, modern Okay, get age. on with it. I'm the... <laughs> And I get friends who go, for fuck's sake, stop interrupting him. Um, uh, what did I know? Oh, the wall. The wall. The wall <laughs> is um, recorded in Poland in front of a Polish audience. Is it? Yeah. And it's also other national equivalents of the wall. Oh, so he just rocks in and does the UK one. Then another yeah. one comes and what they, you know, disinfect the place and then roll in another set. Why yeah. is it done in Poland? Because they can film there and not here or something. I don't know. Live audience. I, don't know. I think the wall itself is like quite a big, it's quite a complex structure. Oh. And I don't think you can move it around and I think it costs quite a bit of money. But yeah, it's done in Poland. And For your, yeah, your knowledge just knows no bounds. No bounds. And in Drop and Give Me 20, we've got some, uh, I've got some quick fire questions for you. Mm. You don't know what they are. No. Whoa. <laughs> so how are you? All right? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you for the chocolate biscuits. Hob- oh, hobnobs. Yeah, they were. Yeah, proper ones. Not the old fake ones. They're mm. proper job. Nice, aren't they? Mm. Just, got... just needed some crisps. Did, <laughs> did I tell you about the co-op's new line of Christmas crisps? No. Fun fact. <laughs> <laughs> right. Why so, don't you bring them? The, I love crisps. I'm not. I can't eat crisps. What? It's one of my targets. I eating. can. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> I bought you a kilo of coffee beans I last week. I could have done. Get greedy. So uh, the range is pigs in blankets. Yeah, I'm liking that. Um, roast turkey. And stuffing. You're in the range a lot. How do you... Oh. No, no, no. The range of crisps. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> this is so co-op. B&M or the range. Okay. You Your say, home oh, ground. You, you said Your home co-op. ground. Yeah, I am. And the third one, which I was... I mean, I'm not a cynical person, as you know, but it did make me think there's... This is the tautology of the crisp world. The third flavor was roast potato. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, that's a crisp. <laughs> <laughs> The definition. <laughs> yes. So what we've got is a piece of potato that we've sliced and then roasted. I've got an idea. Yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> the dragons are in front of me. <laughs> yes. Picture this. Yes. Okay. <laughs> potato. What, what? Yeah. Chopped up. Don't know why I've got northern. Why am I the no, top? it's because um, who goes potato? Um, Keith Lemon. <laughs> yeah. Oh, crikey. We're going to have one of those episodes, aren't so, we? So anyway, I was going to go, this is ridiculous having roast potato flavour crisps. Yeah. Did you ever have chipmunk Oxo crisps? Oxo flavored crisps? No. What, after chipmunk after flavor? swimming? Yeah. No, no. Well, made brand. by chipmunk. <laughs> the brand was chipmunk. <laughs> right, I don't okay. know why I said after swimming. Um, after swimming. It, was, it was chipmunk Oxo crisps on a wagon wheel was that a memory? after swimming. Just come back to yeah, you. Yeah. Just came right back. I can even smell the chlorine now. I'm being shouted at by Mr. Nixon. What for? Pissing just in anything. The pool. Oh. Yeah. He was just, no, he was very good. Actually, he taught me to swim. Okay, yeah, that's a good thing. Um, where were we? <laughs> <laughs> Poland, Floundering, I think. Crisps. That was it. The the, the different flavour of crisps. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But so when I so I did some research, and it's um, the crisps do have rock salt, um, pepper, and rosemary. So it has taken it yeah, up I'm... a level. So I would give those a go. But while we're on the subject of crisps. Mm-hmm. So, although I've set a target not to eat them because I was eating too many. Yeah, I really um, was getting a bit, hmm? was getting a bit. It's just bit getting a little much. bit chocolate and crisps and I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to eat that much. I was eating too many. Didn't want to, so I'm stopped. But I did buy a packet of crisps for when I celebrate when I do it. And it was Norfolk Longhorn Beef. Yeah. 
And that's like... My mouth's boring. <laughs> yeah. And I'm thinking, it's just a bunch of flavourings. So I bought it to come back and go, we're being played because they're calling it. But the flavouring for these crisps was from okay. Norfolk Longhorn right. cows. They weren't being played. Weren't being played. Straight down the it line. It wasn't just... Because some crisps, like beef crisps, are suitable for vegetarians, aren't they? <laughs> Honestly. And Bisto. <laughs> if I ever could see your face right now. <laughs> <laughs> I just... <laughs> you look so excited. Yeah. Well, it's, it's crisps. <laughs> Do think your eyes could get any wider? <laughs> <laughs> That's the drugs. Oh, crikey. Are you done Move on. on. You done on crisps? I'm done on crisps. Oh, we did 12 tiny tips. Um, <laughs> You'll say anything <laughs> other than baby. It's never been tiny. <laughs> Oh, God, even my tips is making me laugh. Um, we did 12, the 12 tips from Stan, Stanford. Stanford. Yeah. Stan uh, you Stead. know, and I was... Hit the runway. Yeah. We talked about the 12th one was a bit kind of... Yeah. I should have left it at 11. Yeah. And um, a colleague at work, because I put them in my digest, a colleague mm. at work went, I love the last one. I got home and I put my keys on the hook. Okay. And it was such a small thing, but it really made... It was kind of like a... The day is finished. Okay. And I was like, okay, maybe yeah, I... we left that one too. <laughs> <laughs> You're yeah, welcome. If it works, <laughs> yeah, just absolutely. one person. Yeah. And it got me thinking about hanging stuff up. It got me thinking about the one touch rule. Are you familiar with the one touch oh, rule? Yes. Use it a lot. Do you? Oh, yeah. That's good. It is a good thing. And I've it's got... brilliant. When I remember to do it, it's good. Yeah. For those who don't know, the general idea is that as soon as you touch something, whether it's a piece of mail uh, or a project that needs to be filed, you immediately act on it. Yeah. This could be fully completing the task at once or determining the next actionable steps to move it along. So I think a good example for me is when you come in, it sounds a bit obvious, but when you come in for the house and you take your coat off and you have your coat in your hand mm -hmm. to put it on the hook. Rather, rather than, than carry it all night. Yeah. Or what you did rather than just throw it on, my, on the floor when you <laughs> <Yeah>. came in. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's really what the one touch rule is about, putting your coat away. As an example. Poor example. Yeah, but I, as you can see, I've, one, I've, I've got my, my hoodies over there, my top from training's over there on the, on the sofa. Yeah. That's not good. Well, I should have taken it off and put it, put it where it should be long. Yeah, but you've kept to one touch because you've touched it once and you've shoved it on a chair. <laughs> You're on about <laughs> no, that's tidying. Not, that's not, yeah, but it can be used for that as well. The one touch for me is that you open a piece of mail, which of course I rarely you do. do. Yeah. But if I did and it was... It's about dealing with it. So you look at it and don't deal with it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have a, a bulging file of stuff that I need to deal with. That I won't. But if I do utilize one touch, it would be opening the mail. The letter will say, could you, for, the, for this referral, could you please send your passport number? Mm. And what I would do is put it in a file on one touch you would do the action within that before yes. you can yeah, let go kind of, of the piece of paper. Yes. So I think it's an action rather, rather than putting your coat away. Well, no, I think it was that was another example of... It's a better one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. It is. But I guess it can, it's like, you know... You're on the ropes. Come it on. It could be organised. It could be, I guess, applied to anything, couldn't it? Yeah. It's finishing the task in some ways, isn't it? Yeah. The thing you Not procrastinating. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad I brought that up. Mm. Um, and we do this a lot. We say things on here and we swear blind they're true. Mm -hmm. and we don't know where they came from who told us and we've no. already been carrying around these little facts for years yeah. and one popped in my head this week oh i've got two actually and i thought okay. i'd say them i don't know whether you have the same or where they even came from but uh the first one was margaret thatcher invented mr whippy ice cream you okay that I, one i wouldn't have have you never heard that one no okay no. this this claim was made by the bishop of london in his funeral address that the former scientist was part of a team that invented mr whippy ice cream the new scientist reported in July 1983, as Thatcher was elected a fellow of the Royal Society Body of Scientists, that she had worked developing emulsifiers for ice creams for Joe Lyons. Okay. From 1949 yeah, to rooms. 1951. Yeah. The Washington Post, in the wake of her death, claimed she helped invent ice cream as we know it, <laughs> adding that her efforts as part of the Lyons team to create a cheap, airy ice cream was one aspect of Margaret Thatcher's legacy we can all feel unequivocally good about. It is, though, as the New Yorker has it, a frozen dessert origin myth. So they mean it's not true. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Whippy style soft serve ice cream originated in the US about a decade before Thatcher worked at Jay Lyons. When soft serve arrived in the UK, Jay Lyons was indeed at the forefront, but it had teamed up with the US ice cream Bayamoth. <laughs> Mr. Soft. <laughs> Did you say that? <laughs> Bayamoth. <Yeah. laughs> Mr. Softy and operated franchises under that name. Mr. Softy and Mr. Whippy. Dream mm. team. Yeah, indeed. So it's those things, but it's like the no smoke, no fire kind of 
Yeah. You can see where it comes from. Yeah. yeah. Now it so, gets a bit messy, the old Chinese whispers. So what's the second one? That Bob Holness played the saxophone on Baker Street. I think I might have heard that one, actually. Yeah. Bob yeah. Holness might not be transatlantic or even international name. No. Best known for presenting a TV show called Blockbusters here yeah. in the UK, wasn't he? Yeah. And I think it was a well-known fact he was a very accomplished saxophonist. Okay. Um, so the song is mostly known today for its strike, this is Baker Street, for its striking saxophone solo, a solo that has certainly appeared to increase the amount of usage of saxophones in television and movie soundtracks in the 1980s by a factor of 10. I don't know how, mm. how they've kind of, yeah. I don't know where they got that. I like it though. It's on my top 100, well, my top 100 is only 81, but Baker Street, it is in there. Jerry Rafferty is up I think there. it came on when we were training and we chatted about, I might even gone, yeah. did you know Bob Holden? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Rafferty. Mm -hmm. Jerry. Jerry Rafferty, yeah, did not credit anyone for writing performing the sax solo, so that allowed some people to run wild with jokes and rumours about who performed it. Longtime British music personality Stuart McConey, radio mm -hmm. presenter, yeah. uh, came up with a story in the early 80s that the sax solo was performed by none other than game show host Bob Holness. It was clearly intended as a joke, but over the years it was repeated enough times that people soon began to believe it, and it crept into actual biographies of Holness. Holness appreciated the joke and kept it going on his end as well. <laughs> what a lad. Uh, the actual saxophone player was Raphael Ravenscroft, in 2012, mm -hmm. Ravenscroft claimed he was never actually paid for the performance. Uh, he was given a check for £27, but it bounced. <laughs> <laughs> they are. Mm, interesting. Yeah, well, aren't I? Any apologies? Do you have any apologies? When we got to the half knob, I thought I said I did have an apology, but I'm not sure mm. I have. You're going to do that thing as soon as I've hit the music. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> We're all being played, are we? You sure? So... One of the things that what's happened is, come on, who's upset you this week? Come on. Okay, I'll picture the scene. I, I'm, I like doing this because I like to visualize. So I'm picturing the scene. Mm -hmm. So Amelia is down with, I don't know, this is one difficult thing. And for all those people out there that have sons and daughters of dating age, you're going to recognize this, is that whatever word you use to uh, talk describe the, the relationship status. Yes, right. yeah. So you can be not boyfriend and girlfriend or not together, but sharing the same bed. It's, you can be talking, but seeing each other. I don't. Oh, yeah. It's one of those things where you end up sounding really like older generation. So basically, you've got no idea. No. So if I say now. <laughs> so basically, Amelia, don't say anything. Amelia was down with her boyfriend. She'd go, ridiculous. We're in stage four. Yeah. You know, 4B. <laughs> so four anyway. talking. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So Amelia was down with her significant. Other. And. We went into Sainsbury's and I thought I'm going to use this as an opportunity to see if I can look at Sainsbury's through other people's eyes. And <laughs> Jumped on his back. You know? <laughs> yeah. Put your head on his shoulder. I mean, what? <laughs> Shut my eyes. See and... what it's like to be six foot three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And a quarter. And good looking. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, so he took me around the store with my eyes shut and described <laughs> what he saw. So we went to the gift section, which was like, it was subdued. One of the things I noticed that there was no mistletoe in oh, the... Oh, so it was open, the gift section. Ah, oh, right. Well, Ooh, don't, start me, a... don't start me on this. Well, I've just started you on it. Were they just... essential gift items? Oh, oh, honestly, don't start me. No, go on. No, we'll, put, we'll fit this in somewhere else because I've got... We'll fit well, this we kind at... of touched on it with the raspberries, didn't we, the other day? And immediately not being able to get to the raspberries. Well, seriously, we'll leave this. Otherwise, I don't... The one thing Shall I, I make always a note? say... Make a note. So it's um, essential, livid about essential, non-essential in gyms. I've got a gym update. In gyms, not in supermarkets? Both. Crazy. But no, I, I've said to you since our very first podcast, I am never going to go off on a tangent and I've stuck to it for 27 podcasts. I've never, we've never introduced something. We've never gone off topic. No. No. You don't want to no. start now, is that what I'm you're saying? Not. I want to be structured and true to myself and true to you and the listeners. So... We're going round. And, and the other promised yourself that you're all full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> you're upholding them both self, magnificently. Self-fulfilling self prophecy. <laughs> um, stick to what you're good at. So we looked at the gift section, which has been reduced. There was no mistletoe, which I thought, because there was like plastic holly and plastic. There was a plastic wreath that was just a lump of plastic for 20 quid, but it had no mistletoe in it because obviously that would encourage. It's still left over from Remembrance Day. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was quite a horrible thing. But anyway, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. I'm not a big Christmas fan. So I'm going to pick one thing. There was a hot water bottle, £10, hot water bottle in a very dull pink fur cover. So again, 
I'm going to do what I've done with you before. I'm going to throw it open to the audience. Mm-hmm. You're in design and marketing. You're in front of Dragon's Den and yeah. you say to them, I've got an idea to have featured hot water bottles with little mottos on them that will sell well at Christmas. You've got me. I'm interested. So you've got the four of them sitting there in their chairs mm. and straight away... Th- They've all moved to the edge of their chairs. Yeah. One of them straight away goes like, I'll give you all the money, but I want yeah. the whole of your business. <laughs> One of them's rubbing their trousers. Yeah. yeah. And Peter, is it Peter Jones? Jones yeah. Sits there and just... He's it like scowls. the Simon Cowell, isn't yeah, it? Just and then like, he'll like destroy you or if it's good i'll keep, come yeah. in and slay the I'll other take dragon because you want yeah. me most because he's tall <laughs> so and powerful so the question i'm going to ask you is they only had one hot water bottle and it had two words on it so this is in their christmas aisle right how would you sum up christmas on a hot water bottle um, it might not necessarily be um, um, okay it was in the christmas aisle but it wasn't necessarily a christmas greeting Okay. Two words? Yeah. Time wasted. <laughs> what what Christmas. I'm saying. Oh, Christmas, yeah. <laughs> my, my whole podcast existence. Yeah. Absolute waste of time. Yeah. No. Um, sorry, shall I be serious? Well, just try and think of what you... I, I Fest, couldn't, so is it festive or not? It was in the, the Christmas aisle, but oh. I don't know. It doesn't have to be a Christmassy. It could be a music, because like everything has was to have gin in it. Yule it? Tide. No? Okay. No. Close? No. Am I miles away? Well, it was so inane, you won't get it. But uh, have hot look. water. You could, that could have been it. It could have been a smiling face. Is oh, I'm in hot water, couldn't it? Like, oh, I'm in trouble. Yeah. So not what was it? I'm, no, it was. Don't guess anymore. Not now. What? Not now. What? Don't buy it. You mean? <laughs> it's like I said to Amelia. How would you use? Because obviously there's a message, so you need to relay it to something. So I came up with two options. If you've got not now on a hot water bottle, I think it's um, a guide to your bedfellow about whether they stand any chance of sex. And that you go to bed with a hot water bottle. Yeah. And when the duvet comes back, it will be there (laughs) lying on your stomach going, (laughs) not now. And so you don't actually have to speak to them. The hot water's doing the talking for you. That was my first thought. (laughs) It's not bad. The second one was linked to that because... Having three daughters, I know that that one of the few cures for period pains is a hot water bottle and wrapping up in a big blanket. Hot water bottles are an essential. And I was thinking whether it's almost like, I've got my hot water bottle, I'm a bit poorly. Not now, leave me alone. But I just thought that someone has been paid to come up with that and then print it. And then someone has thought, a team of people have thought, that's going to be a top seller. I'd love Mm. to say to Sainsbury's, how many not now hot water bottles mm. have you sold? They go not now. <laughs> <laughs> They're just yeah, just hold up a hot water bottle. <laughs> Customer services motto <laughs> not now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <go> to <laughs> They'll have it strapped to their front. <laughs> I've got a complaint. <laughs> we should have called the podcast not now. Yeah. Oh, that would be brilliant. But again, it's. So that isn't being played. That's just being inane, isn't it? That's just like really. Oh, right. This is not the juice of the. This is not no. the. This is not the no. meat of your. This isn't the meat. The meat is the meat is coming. Oh, no. excellent! Nice starter. So, we proceed along the aisles. I buy my Norfolk Longhorn beef crisps, and you know the product placement is at the end of the aisles. Is where the oh, things. So was, this, was this before we decided not to eat crisps anymore? Yes, I bought them there as an incentive. I'm not going to eat. Them. Are these, these your target crisps? Yeah. So you're celebratory, I've gone three weeks without crisps. Yeah. I'm going to smash a bag of yeah. Longhorn. Right, okay, cool, got you. At the end of one of the aisles, in the distance, I saw a big bar of chocolate. And because I bought crisps, my first yeah. thought is, yeah. what does everybody think when they have beef crisps? Yeah. Chocolate. Melt some chocolate and drib- dribble it over the crisps. Anyway. Hold on. No, I didn't. I will put it past you, just check in. <laughs> I have got a question for you, but this is later around crisp and chocolate, so bookmark that. So... Yes, saw, saw these big bars of chocolate and thought, I'll go and investigate because they were obviously a Christmas special because it said exclusive deals. And I thought, I'm not going to miss out. They're pretty big if in, you're at the end of the aisle and you can spy them. They Just were one big. Of those big bumper ones. They were bumperish. Okay. Huh. But after the hot water bottle, anything was going to excite me. <laughs> so I walked towards them and saw that they were Premier League Ooh. bars of chocolate. Ooh. And again, because I'm supporting a team that will never ever be in the Premier League, you walk right past them. I thought, <laughs> I thought, wonder what those people that support <laughs> Premiership teams would do at Christmas. They'd buy one of these. Would you like to ask me? 
Oh, yeah. They didn't have a Wolves one. <laughs> they never do. No. Oh, they'll have Arsenal. Man, we're in Bristol. They'll yeah. have Arsenal. Match like JD Sports. Yes. Let's go in there. There's more Arsenal, Man U and Liverpool kits yeah. than you've got City Rovers. They had Spurs, Man U. I mean, that's uh, probably the same in every sports shop yeah. across the country, isn't it? But I looked at the bars of chocolate and their exclusive deals and their, they were advertised as something like Premiership exclusive chocolate. So I walked over and looked at the bars. The bars are 360 grams and this is Decent important. Decent size. Yeah. The current rate of chocolate is a pound for 100 grams. You know when you get those bars that are... Have you worked this out or is that just... No, a... no. You know when you go in to a shop in the moment in the UK and there's always a bar of chocolate... No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shut, mate. Oh, yeah. That's true. <laughs> but you go into a supermarket. Bar yeah, of chocolate's yeah. a pound, isn't it? It's normally 150 and they, uh-huh. they have it. It's always reduced to a pound. Yeah. Okay. And that's 100 grams. Okay. So those... You do the math on this. Oh, shit. Go on. <laughs> The 360 gram bar should cost what? £3.60. You got it. Boom. And it cost, did I tell you? No. Six pounds. Oh, okay. That's so, the price of the Premier League yeah, licensing. So what's the difference? Right? Show us the difference. Do your sums. Show us your workings. What did you say? What? Six, what? It's £2.40. Okay. So. <laughs> I got there. I was just carrying the thought. I haven't got time to waste. <laughs> <laughs> I've got three hours Not more now. to do on this podcast. <laughs> you can see what you're getting for Christmas. <laughs> um you could do that for anything couldn't you <laughs> any <brilliant>. question yeah. <laughs> yeah are you going to put the rubbish out water bottle <laughs> um it's a lovely put down isn't it yeah and it's yeah, yeah. it isn't actually that rude it's just like no. go away isn't it yeah. um so anyway so two pounds 40 is the difference between that bar of chocolate but for that two pounds 40 obviously you're getting your premier league um, logo Okay, so what the Premier thing is, it isn't actually printed or it isn't um, embossed on the chocolate. It's not a shape of a football or anything? No. It's a piece of cardboard, very, very thin cardboard, that basically has a sort of mergy picture of the club's crest and of a player. What club? What? So if it was Man U, it would have the uh, little the Red Devils thing. And well, a, they've chosen the Premier League teams and there's one for each. Well, for about the, for about four or five. Of them. <laughs> so it, the top four. The point I'm making: it's a small piece of very thin cardboard that mm-hmm. goes over the chocolate bar. Okay, it's not even a collector's piece. It's not a collector's piece. It's really even. It's not even it's cheap. It's not colourful. It's not glitter. It hasn't got anything. It's a very. If you saw it on the floor, you wouldn't pick it up. That's the only difference. Two pounds forty for a piece of cardboard. Now I'm expecting. If um, I was in embossed. my if I was in my judgmental days, I would be expecting you to go. It's a free market. People are going to buy it. They've got to have an add-on because there's going to be a cut to the premiership clubs, blah, blah, blah. And you go, people don't have to buy it. But if our supermarkets are about, we're helping the community, we're doing everything we can, we're all coming together. Like Tesco did one the other day. Thank you so much for everything you're doing. The point I'm making is if I had Mr. Sainsbury here again, and I keep saying this and say to him, you're charging £2.40 for a small piece of cardboard yeah tell me how that helps the world yeah and he'd go oh well people like it and they're selling no, they don't. just don't do it no they don't or the premier league clubs if you know marcus rashford with manu why didn't manu go we'll do these special ones we won't take a cut it's christmas yeah or this or give the things to food banks exactly or this two pound 40 is going to yeah. for everything you're paying a yeah. quid is going to x one and how brilliant would that be yeah, man united have would. done that everything marcus rashford has done two pounds yeah. 40 we'll put half of it you get a useless piece of cardboard but you buy a tin of beans yeah. so that was the first yeah. thing and i just feel that's why i think we're being played because people will be shopping and the kids will go oh man united man united and the mum will go fine i'll chuck that in yeah. it's a bumper bar of chocolate but if you said to them two pounds 40 for a piece of cardboard could you if you wrapped it up in glittery paper it would look nicer than mm. well it was yeah, yeah anyway so we continued the shop and then that afternoon i received a text from amelia and i'm going to show you this text now we always do this i never prepare stuff don't i <laughs> i'm not noticed to be honest Never occurred to me. Is that because you edited all that? Don't know what you're talking about. I don't know. So I'm going to now show you this, and I want you to describe to the listeners what you see. <laughs> yeah, okay. It's a Cadbury's chocolate bar. Yes. With the word mark on it. Yes. And I don't even I've think seen it's... Them. Do you think it's that well written even? It's a bit... No. It's just plain white. Yeah. So there's no glitter, there's nothing else. So that bar, do you know the size of that bar? Oops. I don't know, it looks decent. That's camera angle. 
It's 100 grams. Oh, isn't it really small? Yeah. So it's a one pound bar of chocolate with the word Mark really? written yeah, on it. Yeah, and it's in, a, it's in a carousel stand, isn't it? Yes. With and everyone goes and looks for their name and go, oh, they've got Mark. Yeah. So second question of the day. Combien? Combien? C'est chocolate. Um... Carry the four over the three. Um, well, going on the same logic, yeah, uh, I would probably say two pounds seventy-five. A lady Godiva. Legit. Five pounds for a one pound bar of chocolate That's because even it, worse. it has the word mark written on it in plain white. The world's gone mad. Yeah, it's gone mad. And I've noticed now you can get names written on just about Fiver. everything. Yeah, a fiver for a hundred gram bar of chocolate. I mean, there's a lot of them on, still on the... Th- I mean, if people... Maybe people aren't buying them. Maybe not. But I couldn't have shown you a photograph if there was none there. Why'd you say that? Because <laughs> you just <laughs> said... You started trying to start on me. You just said on that visit, photograph there was a lot of bars of chocolate. Okay. There wasn't like... There might have been 8,000 and there's all the, the others just, 40. just marks are left. Is it, yes. There's no fucking marks left on well, the it was planet. Only, only 55, wasn't it, last <laughs> yeah. year? It's only going to be 60-year-old men that are going to buy it. We're too tight and streetwise. <laughs> yeah. They need to have all your, all your years of wealth management. Yeah, You need to have your modern names, don't you? Yeah. Your Xavier's and your mm. Chelsea's. Chardonnay. Chardonnay, yeah. So, I mean, it's not even paletta, is it? I mean, if you're going to go buy a T-shirt, you know, like the football shirts, you put your name on it, you pay per letter, don't you? Yeah. You yeah. Know? All joking aside, it just made me think, because there's a lot of other things now where you can get them named. Is this our quest for celebrity taken to the lowest level, where basically the product becomes exciting because it has been personalised. It hasn't truly been personalised. It's just been printed in a big printing press somewhere with our name. But somehow it has some... Oh, that one's for me, because Coke were the first ones to do this, weren't they, on their labels? But is it that bit of celebrity about you're seeing your name on a bar of chocolate in a shop and somehow that just has a little dopamine hit of, oh, they're thinking of me. That's just about me. It's Gil, special. We, we touched on it in the, I hope it stays in, in the last episode about the, the cars. And the, it becomes a gimmick. When you run out of ideas, you go gimmick. Yeah. yeah. Don't you? Yeah. Or is it the best that we can How do, do we sell? When they're not selling more chocolate, how do we just make more money? Yeah. But it's, that, it, what, why not? With everything that's going on this year, why not? I don't think everything corporate has to do has to go to charity. I'm not saying that there has to be. But... I mean, to print a name that costs them nothing and charge four pounds for it. And I take your point that everybody's free to buy it or not. It just feels to me, I think, disingenuous. But also, you word. don't need to slap another two, you know, well. Three quid would have done. Yeah. A fiver. Yeah. It's. No, it's, it's naughty, isn't it? Yeah. Mugged off. Maybe. Mugged off. Well, anyone who's going to buy one. The final thing that the straw that broke the camel's back was I went to buy myself some zero alcohol beer, went to the wrong bit, and. There's, a, there's quite a lot of marketing for Moretti beer. I don't know if you've yeah, heard of it. Yeah, Moretti, yeah. It's nice. I like the packaging. It looked mm-hmm. good. And it's I got a little fella on it, isn't it? The little Bavarian fella, yeah. dude. And um, picked it up, went to put it in the basket, four bottles for £4.50, realised it was 5% alcohol, put it back, because Sainsbury's have changed all their aisles around just to make life easier, to confuse COVID. That's why they've done it. Yeah, of course it is. Yeah, you you realise you don't have to walk in the clockwise direction now do you because covid's no. worked that one yeah, out that's, so yeah, that's, yeah, that's changed yeah. and there's no one stopping you go in the store like there was a couple of weeks ago everyone can just go in now yeah i like the new non-judgmental yeah. mark <laughs> so i realized my uh-huh. mistake i realized my error. so i went to the non-alcohol section yeah um where everyone looks pious <laughs> 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 and uh picked up moretti and then didn't think until i bought it and just saw the till ring up 450 i went oh excuse me these are the non-alcohol and she went yeah yeah four for 450 it was the same what the point i'm making is the zero alcohol was the same as the same alcohol price. and a major component of alcoholic is uk duty mm-hmm. so i'm paying the same for a product so moretti are getting no duty on that product yeah and charging me the same yeah, okay well that's not right yeah that isn't yeah it's like we've made a saving yeah but we're, we're, not not pass, we're not even passing a bit of it on. We're going to charge all our beers four fifty. Yeah. <laughs> <Be> pious love. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You and your bloody podcast. Just get over yourself. So I went to Moretti. I yeah. went to their customer service, and you know what happened? <laughs> what did they say? I just held up the bloody hot water bottle. <laughs> bravo! Bravo! 
I've got some quick fire questions for you. You haven't primed me. Go. Uh, the most effective exercise you know without using any equipment. Walking. Yeah? Yeah. Effective? Yeah. Okay, for what? Everything? Yeah. Great. <laughs> it really is quick fire answers as well. Yes. No. Yes. The reason I, I don't think a lot of people would have thought I would have said walking. I think walking will tick the maximum number of boxes. We've mm. all been about the ticks. Okay. So the clients at the moment that are doing really well on walking are reporting back to me. They're doing it for mindfulness, for engaging with nature, for fresh air. So the exercise comes second. It's the activity that's first. What it does to them comes second. Okay. Interesting. I had a client this week who'd walked eight miles and said, and she's quite an active person, that said that walk had taken, you know, she was feeling it the following day. Yeah, yeah. I've had a number of clients who said the more they've been walking, they're feeling different muscles, they're feeling more flexibility. So it hits all those criteria. Mm -hmm. And the other bit, which we mentioned yesterday, uh, the the other podcast, sorry, when we mentioned about social engagement, the Mm -hmm. one thing about walking that probably the other things I could have said, you are out and even if the engagement is limited, you are, you're not stuck in side four walls. So yeah, walking without a shadow of a doubt. If you had just 10 minutes a day to train, what would you focus on? So I would focus on compound exercises which are anything that's involving more more than one muscle group which is people are going to go no well you did the triceps thing (laughs) but that was on purpose just to just to target one muscle group and it does target your chest Mm -hmm. as well and it does do a bit on your core so Mm -hmm. it isn't just one so the compound stuff that we do so deadlifts Mm -hmm. i would do some well put it this way what was it 10 minutes a day yeah i would do a very small a small percentage on balance so romanian deadlifts a balance thing that I've been doing some clients this week. Did I do it with you? you? Did it with me, yeah. Yeah, so that was a yoga-based balance, which I thought a lot of yeah. clients have found that quite... And we also did good. that walking forwards and backwards. Lunges. Double lunge. Yeah, yeah kind of and that, that was... Step. People are going, why is this different? We've yeah, been doing lunges freaky. for years. Why is this different? Yeah. So, yeah, so two exercises that are based on balance uh-huh. and movement. Um, I would then do a compound. So squats are a compound. Mm. Split squats move quite a few muscles. Mm and deadlifts and if you haven't got a lot of weight you can still do the deadlift movement and you know yeah still do it with with dumbbells mm-hmm. and then i would do body weight exercises so i would do press-ups which is sort of compound ish mm-hmm. and then i would end up with something uh core so the one we did say the mm-hmm. dead bug and i yeah. wouldn't i wouldn't do a hundred sit-ups i wouldn't do so yeah so something around balance something about moving your lower body that's mm-hmm. a compound and then the upper body would be targeting some muscles. Okay. Yeah, press-ups are underrated, definitely. Mm. This is really broad, and that one was quite broad, but what is your view and approach to nutrition? So I guess where I was coming with from that is, how do you view food? Do you know what I, I mean? Yeah, I think... Or the, do, you, do, you, do you ever think, do you want to think, I guess it's a quite... A, I was trying to make it less broad by it's almost, <laughs> giving you some yeah, ideas, but... Um, I think it's almost too broad. Or do you broad. not think... Do you not think about it? So at the moment, my food is more as fuel than planned. Mm-hmm. So if I'm doing more of a bodybuilding type activity, I guess you need to determine your target. So mm-hmm. if I'm trying to make myself bigger and grow muscle, mm-hmm. the key ingredient is protein. Yeah. The majority of people eat far too little protein mm-hmm. and it's hard to eat a lot of protein. Yeah. So you can get 25 grams of protein, for example, would be a chicken breast or a, a biggish salmon fillet. If you're trying to get the amount of protein that you would have to build muscle, you're having, um, I set myself a target of about 120 grams. So it's the equivalent of maybe five chicken breasts. So you can get that, you can have a chicken breast, you can have a salmon fillet. You're then going to have to have a protein shake. You might have a can of tuna. So protein is key for building muscle and repairing muscle, probably more important, repairing muscle. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, I think that's almost too broad, too broad a subject. Yeah, I guess it was that, because sometimes I kind of go, oh, it's dinner. It just feels like such a massive chore rather than kind of going, oh, I know what I've got today because I've already planned it. Oh, so there's, there's... But we just sat in the kitchen and I just gave you a recipe idea there that takes 15 I, yeah. minutes. It hits well, all the macros. eating a biscuit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's good. Yeah, I guess I... it depends what you target. I, I think just if I was going to say anything on nutrition, it would be understand what you're eating. I didn't know you were going to ask this question. So something I wanted to show later, I'm going to show now. <laughs> this is going to make you smile. You won't believe this. So I've I've kept the Something timing. You're saying. <laughs> yeah. There's a chance it might not be true. I was going to publish this photo today mm-hmm. because I had a snack today. And as I had the snack, I thought, I have never seen this snack on 
a PT's Instagram story because mm-hmm. it isn't very Instagram friendly and okay. it hasn't got quinoa in it. <laughs> and you can describe the stack, but I'd like you to say what's the time that the photo was taken at the top? 10.45 10.45 today. So I was looking for a snack. I'm not eating crisps. Mm-hmm. So I thought, what snack can I have? So if you describe the snack. I didn't look at it then. I, okay. This... <laughs> not my feet. I that looks actually really nice. It's two crumpets, yeah. toasted crumpets. You put Marmite on that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then you put some cheddar on the top. Cheddar on the top. That looks banging. Right. That's right up my street. The reason I was going to put that on an Insta story was... You've got the protein and fats. Because you're winning at life. Yeah. That's why. Yeah. You've got the protein and fats in the cheese. Marmite has got a bit of B12. I know mm. B12 isn't the end of the mm-hmm. world. But crumpets are a low, it's a carbohydrate, but it's yeah. a low fat alternative. And I looked at that and I thought, that's a banging, that's such a it great is. snack. It's... So when people come to me, well, I've had a handful of nuts. Nuts, is, nuts are a very, very poor. Mm. The amount of calories it's you have to take to get the protein, yeah. you're taking an awful lot of fat. And I'm looking at Marmite on crumpets with cheddar. And I'm pleased you said cheddar. So I didn't post that because I thought, firstly, if you look at the photograph, it's got my feet in it. Which... <laughs> it looks like you're about to piss on it or something. <laughs> the, the, the crumpets do look like the size of two flying saucers, don't they, in relation to my feet? <laughs> anyway. So at 10.45, I had that snack. That snack, if we're talking about nutrition, that snack is a perfect snack because it's filling, because the protein, yeah. I keep wanting to say the word sate. It's say it, it's satiety, isn't it? It's, I always get this wrong and people go, oh, you can't say it probably. It's a feeling of fullness. Not wrong. <laughs> it's a feeling of fullness. Okay, yeah. So it's, it's around, and I quote this quite often, you have 100 grams of a jacket potato and you're fairly well full. Mm-hmm. You have 100 grams of chips and you could have another 100 grams, mm. and you have 100 grams of crisps, mm. and you can keep on eating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the jacket potato fills you, but it's basically 100 grams of potato, but because it doesn't have the fat of the other two, fills you in a different way. Just, okay. just the potato by itself without the fat is more filling. Mm. The next picture I'm going to show you, I want you to... Th- this is going to blow your mind. Like, if this doesn't get listeners through the roof. So I'm going to... There's no trickery here. I'm going to slide to my next photograph. Is you swiping? And I want you first to tell me the time at the top of that. The uh, time is 11 minutes past 11 today. So after I'd made my crumpets. Yeah, you went out. No. For second breakfast. No, I decided to Hobbit. sit down and do the re- research on the vagus nerve. Uh-huh. And I sat in front of the telly and quite often I'll put the telly on. Oh, the telly? I thought you looked. Sorry. No, that's not like me. you're in a cafe. No, 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 no. Sorry, I hadn't seen the rest of the picture. So this is at, this is half an hour after I'd had my crumpets. Yes. And so I switched on the telly, but I turned the volume off. It was literally just to have a bit of colour in the mm-hmm. room while I was working. I'd like to have a distraction. So I couldn't hear what was being said. Unfortunately, on this item, they put the title of what this item was, which you are now going to read. Uh, <laughs> it's someone on a cookery programme who says cheddar and marmite crumpets. <laughs> That's amazing. It's even more amazing that when you described it, you said cheddar. You didn't even say cheese. No. So I made... That's been descriptive. And then half an hour later... It was on the telly. It was on the telly. just ahead of the, head of the curve constantly, aren't He you? didn't have it quite the way I did. It was... What, we, did, he, what did he do? Did he, he made it a bit fancy and put... How'd you make that fancy? Oh, he put juniper mushrooms oh, and... Oh, no, tarragon. Tarragon mushrooms B-A. on top. It's mad with him. Anyway, so that was... You, that. Should, you should put that or do it again, make a really nice photo of it. Get the old uh, portrait, yeah, portrait on it, note. and make you know get the old depth of field on yeah. it. Put it up there and smash in life comment. And yeah. do the hashtag yeah. winning. You know? it, it was lovely, a lovely <laughs> snack. So, in answer to your, a long winded answer to your question about nutrition, it's about what's right for you at the time. Mm-hmm. And I think snacks are the biggest downfall on nutrition. I think sometimes people get their meals right, but they get their snacks wrong. Yeah. So if you can have a snack like that that fills you up, tastes good, good yeah. for you, very good. Everyone's a winner. messages from listeners yes and why i found these interesting one was from um, a client and i didn't know they were listening to the the podcast and sometimes when clients are there and i'll refer to the podcast or refer to something we've been talking and sometimes when we say oh actually we were talking about this it might be useful you know the triceps exercise for example i've done with a few people and said oh it's if you just want to see it just go to the to the instagram nice plug (laughs) nice plug yeah um so i didn't know this person was actually listening or i wasn't actively sure they were and trained them um in the week and then the following day they said 
loving no pain, no gain. The banter between each other is great, but sensible advice. Brian is so holistic. He is fab. So that was nice. Yeah. And then this was a really interesting one. It says, also identify myself increasing exercise during lockdowns and then injuries. And I thought that was good in terms that we, quite a while ago, we were talking about, you can go sort of one of three ways in lockdown. Mm -hmm. And one is, I can now run every day. Yeah. And overcooking it. Yeah. Overcooking it. And there is this bit about overtraining. And I know, yeah. we talked about overtraining the other day. You can overtrain, and this person was finding that the freedom to be able to run had a had a downside, yeah. but has acted very responsibly since. Yep. I said thank you for the feedback, and I said Brian will be back for a part two, which I think he will be. Did they send the hearts in the eyes of Loji? <laughs> yeah. Brian. <laughs> yes. um, and then asked me another question I answered, and then came back again and said, great, thank you, because I gave a, um, just an answer to something. <laughs> I love the podcast. <laughs> well, thanks for that. <laughs> Um, I just realized I can't read it out because it's doing something I shouldn't be doing during lockdown. Um, <laughs> came back a little bit later and said, great, thank you for your information. Loved the podcast with Amelia and was touched with her vulnerability. And again, really proper feedback. Do you know what I mean? It's it's nice mm. that people are listening and, and resonating with what we're saying. That was number one. And number two was a friend of Amelia's and Amelia sent through this. It was interesting. The conversation with this person started because we were talking about etymology, entomology. Mm-hmm. Words, isn't it? Entomology, yeah. And this person said they were doing a word a day. And I, I mentioned this to you, and I don't think we're going to have a word of the day. I think we use a lot of words. Study of insects and their relationships to humans. Yes, exactly. Insects. She was asking about different insects. <laughs> no, what's the study of words? Well, that's what you just fucking said. No, no, no. I... <laughs> you just said entomology. Okay, was it endomology then? literally thought that's where you were. yeah insects there's some there's some irony that i'm talking about the study of words and i've got it wrong and um and i'll just put what's the study of words or formation or origin of words yeah it could be origin of words oh etymology 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 well that's close enough that all that's all being edited right etymology Perfectly to make you look silly <laughs> <laughs> etymology yes is that the origin of words or the study of words jesus christ okay look at it yourself I'm trying to think Colin's not back. She's honestly, I, I think we're going to have to let her go. <laughs> she hasn't been back since International Men's Day, has she? Did we decide not to cover that? It's what International Men's Day. No, okay. you know my view on it. Yeah, it's like okay. Christmas. Yeah, okay. So etymology, the study of the origin of words and the way in which their meanings have changed throughout history. Yes. Well, that is spot on because this person said I'm going to have word of the day, and I said one of the words we were sort of. Um, promoting was the beer moth which mm-hmm. again you related to in the last podcast and i said the interesting historical version of that is i think it was mentioned in the bible in job i think mm-hmm. as a as a dragon or a monster and it's now over time changed into meaning a large commercial or industrial cartel so it's much you know it, that's an interesting yeah and yeah. also the hairs running which i was looking up that's changed over time the hemoth the hemoth so although some people are still correcting me on that oh and just talking when i was in sainsbury's yeah talking about iron brew yeah and was told often that it was urn brew and the person who was with me was from up north because it is spelled i-r-n isn't yeah. it Ur. but it's made out of girders that's their made in scotland from girders yeah <laughs> or in ireland <laughs> <laughs> um uh, so anyway i said iron and he said no that's right up north we say iron brew but it doesn't matter so this person was saying she was looking out a word of the day she had an app and she was looking to increase her vocabulary and i said as a shameless plug we do lots of long words listen to the podcast and she said oh of course i will so i saw her on tuesday and on wednesday she wrote to me and said blah blah blah, blah. been listening to the podcast really enjoying I listened to the first one today about the random act of kindness and that he bought a girl a McDonald's. That's the first first, first one? one. Wow. Yeah. Firstly, nice that she's listening. Yeah, definitely. But I thought, I, I do like this bit around language and I think we do use words and I think it might be something that, not make a feature of, but just, I think the whole vocab thing is is quite important. I'm up for features. Yeah. yeah. Talk about word of the day. Tab of the it's day. Like, <laughs> yeah. Sesame Street. Oh yeah, we're doing tab of the day today. <laughs> we could do <laughs> Do you want to? I haven't really planned about where it was going to go. What I could do is spin through my yeah, tabs. Yeah, I tell, I tell you what, spin through while whilst the th- whilst the new theme tune's playing, right? <laughs> Let's see where it stops. Where it goes, nobody knows. <laughs> okay, I've spun, what have you landed on? I've spun my tabs. There's four. <laughs>
<laughs> it's for what tabs? Yeah. Come look, on, on the, the page. Th- what's the first? Go on. Look at the third one. <laughs> <laughs> it says sparklers. <laughs> what on earth is that? Is that the, is that chopped off word or? Oh. <laughs> uh-huh. How to spell naughty words with a sparkler, right? Yeah. How old are you? <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> We've got like 27 episodes or whatever. What are we, 27? Oh, shit. I don't know. Without using the C word, we've used it twice in the last two episodes. Unbelievable. Yeah, but you're beeping. We agreed we were. Yeah, we are to... beeping that. We're not, you know. You know why that was used? Because it was, I was thanking someone for the bonfire party. It was in one of our WhatsApp, in the yeah, tourist it WhatsApp. Was, yeah. And there's someone on our tourist WhatsApp who doesn't, doesn't like, like that, that word. word. So, of course. So, having it done in sparklers. <laughs> Moth to a flame, isn't it, yeah, for us? <laughs> quite literally. <laughs> So two football, one coronavirus, one item is unavailable, one sparklers. Do butterflies hibernate? Uh, I'd say no. No, no, no. It's, not, it's just the, these are just the ones <laughs> I'm looking at. <laughs> um, I don't what you did. I want to shout the answer out. Binaural beats. Hmm? Binaural beats. I don't know what words you've just said to me. Dougie Stone Radio. Still don't know what you're on about. Char- Are you just reading the titles of your tabs? Yeah, Charlie Sharing. Not a clue. But it said technically insects don't hibernate. They go into a state of dormancy. The majority of butterflies will overwinter or hibernate. Oh, well, they do? Mm. Mm. How long do they last? Not very long. Are you sure? They, they, they last like days. No, if they're fat butterflies. Why is the internet so... Shit. Well, it's just... So full of information? Why doesn't it just stick to one subject? Why is it so intangible? Why does it go off on tangents? Yeah. Um, what happens to butterflies in the winter? Right. Most... Oh, no, they don't survive. The... Hold on. No, no. Listen to this. This is fucking... Oh, this has blown my mind. Most butterflies that live in cold climates mm. spend the winter as caterpillars. What? <laughs> they... Yeah, no. butterflies last literally a day. Most butterflies spend the winter as caterpillars. So, so, so they, they're not butterflies, they're caterpillars. Do they transform back? No, they don't. That's Benjamin Button they, again. <laughs> <laughs> They've just written it wrong, haven't they? They're not. Most caterpillars survive the winter, then they turn into butterflies. The butterflies don't spend their time as caterpillars, do they? Butterflies are disturbed during hibernation, are likely to wake early and die. So now it's saying they do. Can butterflies smell death? Yes. <laughs> That's not a thing. It's a thing. What? What, smell their own death? They can smell their own demise. The butterfly's sense of smell is supposedly strong enough that it can track a dead or dying body. It is in this way that they find food and avoid predators. They're hardly vultures. I can hardly see a couple of tortoiseshells picking up a dead dog. <laughs> um, painted lady butterfly has a lifespan of 12 months. I thought they'd lasted five minutes, you know. So the average butterfly species has an adult lifespan of two weeks or less. For example, one butterfly studied in Costa Rica had a life expectancy of about two days and, and lived 10 days at the most. No adult butterfly can live any more than a year. Female butterflies die after they laid all of their eggs. They right. mate only once. Mm-hmm. Not mating will prolong the female's life. Oh, right, okay. That's fairly obvious, isn't it? She will then die from natural causes or a predator attack. Fascinating stuff. <sighs> Can't wait to the next tab roulette. I've had an email. Guess who've had an email from? Uh, My dear mum. Oh, the tricep queen. <laughs> I think she'd like that. Um, she did say she'd send us an email, mm-hmm. and she has. I know this is my mother, Yeah, and she's always very invested in what I do, uh, which is great. But I'd like to read it to you. Go for it. Good afternoon, gentlemen. I did threaten an email, so here it is. Mm-hmm. I must say how much I'm enjoying these podcasts. I've never listened to a podcast before, so it's a new thing for me. I had never really thought about well-being and mindfulness, although had been reading a lot on social media. Just got on with things as I've always done. Lockdown has changed my way of thinking. Never had to deal with anything like this in my 75 years. Your discussions have really made me think and readjust my thoughts. They've really helped. Lovely. The suggestions for exercise have been helpful. Found Amelia's video helpful. I'm doing the wall presses and squats and I've also encouraged my husband to do them. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry, I just pictured my dad. (laughs) Would that be a hard task? (laughs) Yeah. I don't know. I'm not sure he'd like it very much. No. But it's nice the idea he's giving it a go. The fact that we are creaking 
shows how much we need them. Your baby steps, setting yourself small aims, is working for me. Spending the summer in the garden, very little got done in the house by choice. The last two months have been difficult getting motivated again. So I've set myself a project each day. For example, vacuum downstairs one day, then upstairs the next. I want to get back into painting pictures without feeling guilty for not doing housework that Mm -hmm. day. I love your humor. I love to listen to you with my morning cup of tea in bed. Your wrapping is great. Sorry, your rapport is great. (laughs) Um, It sets me up for the day. Please carry on the good work. I'm learning so much. Shows you're never too old. That's lovely. Just one more thing. I'm not happy about this. (laughs) Okay. Scone, not scone. And butter, jam, then loads of cream. Winky emoji. (laughs) Stay self and well. Hillary. Lovely. That's great, Hillary. Isn't it? Yeah. That's it for this episode. Well done for getting this far and thanks for listening. All links and references will be in our show notes. Please make sure you subscribe to us via your favorite podcasting app. And if you're enjoying this pod, then please do spread the word. Tell a friend, family member, and whoever you may feel would benefit from having us in their ears. Follow us on Instagram at I'm Finecast and send us your feedback and questions via our email to I'm Finecast at gmail.com. In the next episode, uh, we have essential and non-essential. Uh, and we're going to have, apparently, we're going to have a heated discussion about attitudes to policing. Yeah. That sounds could, scary. Yeah. yeah. Sounds I mean, like you've got quite a I know, a strong... I know there's going to be a bit of dissension between the two of us. I know we've got a, we're coming at this from a different angle. Right, interesting. Cool. Well, we'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Bye. <laughs>